Hi guys, George Glinski here from Toe the Line, joined today by Rockin Robin Deacon. Rockin, how are you doing? I'm rocking. I'm good. I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm good. Um, to be fair, just recharging my batteries. A lot of lockdowns probably doing everyone a favour, recharging and um, regrouping and doing your thing, you know. So I'm doing my thing. Although I'm not working, can't lay me off, but you know. It is what it is. Yeah, it's a difficult time. Where, where are you working at the moment? I'm working at. Um, I was well, I was working at a place I really enjoy in Capital Seafoods in um, London, Fulham, the fishmonger place. Um, but I left there because the travelling was a lot. I, I'm going to go back there. But I love people, great people. They come to my fights. Um, I bought two tables actually for my fights. So much appreciate for that so yeah so I'm, i'll be going back there they're gonna come for my next fight so i'm all really friendly with them but i moved to a place in new haven um do you know what i can't even remember the name it's, i don't remember the name <laughs> but i worked there for three weeks i was on the books for three weeks and then this coronavirus happened so yeah fuck you <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's talk about that last fight uh, against uh, Johnny Lawson at BKB20. Obviously, it didn't go your way. Um, how do you estimate your performance in that fight? The fights never go my way, mate. I'm like a bad, I'm a fucking omen, you know. Is that the right one? Right. Omen? A bad omen, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, a, no, nothing ever goes my way. You've got the, the little dwarf, the poison dwarf, the fucking <laughs> dumb in the first fight. The second fight, I fought. I mean, did even know I was put down. He didn't really, you know. I mean, the first fight, I thought I nicked it. Mm. Second fight, he, he, he beat me. But, you know, I wasn't in a good place. But Lawson, he, I just let him win. He, he needed to get wins, so I let him win. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't be good. No. Um, no, John, listen, John is a very, very tough lad. And if I'm honest with you, um, I boxed him way above my weight, too big. We felt I went up too big. And like he said to you, he went to come up from 13, 14 stone, didn't he? 13 stone, yeah. Um, you know, that's a lot of weight. You know, I had to go up to 11 stone. You know, although I'm, I'm, only, I'm only walking away nat walking around naturally about 11, 11 and a half, hmm. I still, when you're training, you still have to sort of put on the weight because you lose a lot when you're training. You know, so um, yeah, you know, I went up, went up weight, and it's too much. So, poison dwarf, get your fucking boots on. Let's go. Obviously, you speak about Mark Handley there. You're calling for the third fight. Is there any particular reason behind that fight? Um, there's a lot of blab, like bad blood between us. It's more, of, um, I think he, I think it's a love hate relationship. Yeah. You know, I hate him, he loves me. So, <laughs> it, it, you know, uh, this I've got no problem with Mark, Mark's a nice guy. Um, but I think the fight needs to happen because there is a lot of tension between us. Um, yeah, and, you know, I think uh, I was in a bad, bad place before. I mean, I was uh, I was homeless, so I had nowhere to live. Um, so I was waiting for the house to go, to go through. And, uh, yeah, I was just in a bad place. My mom wasn't right. Obviously, um, <clears throat> even with the McIntosh fight, McIntosh and both the Hanley fights, mm. I was still really depressed over the split with my ex-girlfriend at the time. Um, she was suffering with um, breakups real bad. Like, they get to me. Like, if I really like someone, they said, I'm a bit like most people, really, if, if they're honest. And when I like someone, it, it gets to me a lot. And, uh, yeah, it got to me a lot. And I wasn't in the right frame of mind. So, really, in, in all fairness, I was um, using bare knuckle of, of, as a way of me self-harming yeah. um, because I was so impressed. You know, Jim and Joe didn't know that. They just thought I was coming to have a go. But, you know, it didn't bother me, win, lose, or whatever, you know. Obviously, I want to... I had the worst, the worst record in history in boxing. So I don't want to go into another sport and have the worst 
key boost on this go. Do you feel like you've improved since your last fight with Mark Handley? Since Mark Handley, yeah. Mm. Um, like I say, um, I'm running a lot more. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just, I'm not just saying I'm training. I'm not. I'm, I am training. I, you know, I'm actually doing it. You know, even though I did it with the Mark, um, sorry, with the um, Johnny Lawson fight. Trying really hard for that fight, but he's too big, too strong, and uh, and I didn't want to hurt him <laughs> because I love the Irish. I love Irish, man. Irish are wicked, but now nah, you know I like I like Johnny. Um, respect him a lot. Not going to take nothing away from him. He beat me hands down, fair and square, but he was um, too too big, you know. Obviously, you're always making press for your uh, Playboy lifestyle. A brand new asset, the hair transplant. How did that go? Yeah, um, that? yeah it's been good. I mean, I'm really happy with it. I mean, listen, um, it's not even right on my case because after my joining, uh, my father joined Lawson, mm. I was like, do you know what? I kind of want to get the hair transplant. Fuck it, like, I can't be asked. Like, I can't be asked to go to Turkey and the... Uh, and then he in the to switch and said, Robin, if you don't get it done, you're never going to get it done. So luckily, I got it done and the virus happened. So I'm so glad because I'd be a skinny and that would be bald. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad it, uh, so glad it, I got it done. Hmm. Um, so something went up, worked in my favour. Uh, thanks to SD, SD Prime, um, that, uh, obviously, give me the hair transplant to come home. So, thank you to them and Joanna that I've tagged. I can't pronounce her second name because it's Turkey. <laughs> but lovely people made me look like a you know, I'm a bit of a a bit of an infamous celebrity down this way anyway. But I mean, when I went out there, I mean, I had the press, the paparazzi meet me at the airport. It was it was mad. Everyone was looking at me. I was like. Is this meant to be for me? Like, yeah. They would take a picture of him. I was like, oh my God. Like, because obviously it was a big thing for them. And I made, you know, I made worldwide press. I pulled out Justin Bieber. I pulled out fucking Rio Ferdinand. Brad Pickett. I've called out Curtis Woodhouse. I've called them all out. Yeah. You know, KSI. I've called KSI out. You know, so that didn't know when said, let's go. Um, but yeah, you know, I've, I've called out everyone and made an impression. So, I think that that impression will stay with me for a very long time. And I'm happy for it because, listen, I owe money. Uh, I owe money from it. And, you know, it's good. It's good. What exactly do they do with the hair transplant? Is it sort of a graft out the back? They take the hair from the back and put take it on it Take that? it out of your bum. Take it out of your bum. Take it out of back of your hair. Yeah. And they stick it, they stick it in from the back to the front. Um, like I say, I have a full hair, head of hair in a year. Um, it's, been, it's only been two, two, two months and a bit. Yeah, it's been good. And it's like, yeah, like it's, it's good, you know, but I have to keep shaving the back, not the front, just the back, yeah. because you go out from the back's going quicker, because you see here, it is really, really bald. Um, it's completely bald here. I had no hair long at all, and uh, I used to cover it up and come over, you know. But now I won't have to. I won't have to worry. I'll be uh, Britain's worst boxer. The best babe magnet. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll be like a magnetic bastard. Like wherever I go, the women would just stick to me, stick to me. Like that, you know what I mean? I'll be sweet. You know what I mean? Do you feel like? Um... In regards to the hair transplant, we speak a lot about confidence as a boxer being so crucial. Do you feel like that's going to help your boxing at all? Sort of the, the added confidence? Listen, every time I used to go into the bare knuckle ring, even the boxing ring, you know, some hair all right. You know, I didn't want to be on TV with fucking my hair up here and fucking ball patch showing there and all over. Do you know what I mean? I just, yeah, listen, it gives you confidence. It's like a woman, a woman with makeup. Mm. You know, you put, even though I love natural natural beauty, I love women without makeup, you always like get that wow factor when they put makeup on, you know? But if they wear makeup all the time, 
if they wear makeup all the time, it just defeats the object of the wow factor. Do you know what I mean? Because you're so used to seeing them with makeup on. When they put, when they have makeup on all the time, you don't see the change in it. But when they don't, and they look more normal, then when you decide to go out, and they got makeup on, you're like, fuck me, you look, you look amazing. Like that. And they're like, and they're straight, they're, their arms will be straight back with saying, don't I normally? Well, yeah, of course, but you stand like a lot more now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Just yeah. like, you know, I think with the confidence, of course it will. Um, and, and like I say, me actually running and doing my thing, you know, I always make excuses, like, and people think, oh, fucking hell, Robin, you're full of excuses. But listen, I'm serious. Um, you know, I was literally fighting homelessness, depression. When I was fighting Macintosh, who was a fucking incredible ABA talented fighter, mm. and Hanny, who, who is, is a tough guy, of course he is. Yeah. But I had nothing away from him. You know, you, you got to be tough to do bare knuckle. But he, he was tough, and, you know, I've never ever ducked a fight and never ever turned down a fight. So I believe, you know, now I'm crying out for a fight, even though I've cried out for Kurt Hulas, Brad Pickett, Rio Ferdinand, just, Justin Bieber, KSI. I've called them all out. You know, maybe the, the last few I've, I've sort of challenged have been a bit above too high high profile but like, like I say when, when Jim and Joe said to me Robin we've got a fire for you like they come to me and said Robin we've got a Connor Mac for you um, do you want to fight him I didn't even ask what's he had or whatever I said yeah no problem I don't care who, who it is because I wouldn't care anyway but mainly because then I was really depressed I didn't give a fuck I didn't care who I was because they offered me Mike Tyson do you know I mean I don't care um, but yeah, it's, uh, so now I want to fight and have um, rebuild myself, rebuild my confidence. So let me go back from the people that I lost to. Yeah, obviously Connor's gone pro now, so um, that's something about my Connor. Uh, to be fair, I don't get on really well with Connor's mum and family and whatever, and Connor. So. Um, I wouldn't fight Connor anyway, but at least let me have a hand in. Um, at least let me have uh, Mark Hanley, the Pauls and Dwarf. Let me have him and come back on my losses. And, you know, forget Lawson because he's too big. Hmm. You know, as a, as a city fight, I, shouldn't really, I should not have even asked that fight. Hmm. But it was offered to me. And like I say, I don't, I'm not going to say no. You know, Jim and Joe put a lot of work in what they do. And when... I know what it's like because Ross Minter owns a Queen of the Boxing League. And when people say no to a fight, it fucking messes with everyone's head and it just makes more work for everyone. So yeah. if every fighter turned around and said yes, 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 even in the pro game, it'd be a lot more easier. Yeah. Don't bottle your fucking, don't bottle it and fight. I mean, you're there to fight, you're not there to fucking look good and um, have a perfect record. Do you know what I mean? You're there to fight. If you're a man and you're good enough, you're going to win. And you believe in your ability, you're going to win. I believe in my ability, even if I'm fucking, even if I'm Britain's worst boxer. Mm -hmm. I believe in my ability anyway. Um, you know, if you said to me, right, you, you're fighting Jimmy Sweeney tomorrow, I'd be like, sweet, no problem. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't say no because it's, he's a legend. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say no at all. Um, because I, I believe... I'll beat anyone, even though I wouldn't, I believe I could. Mm. In my head, when a fight's not to me, I never have any doubts in my head that I'll, yeah, fuck it, I never turn down a fight. I'm Robin Deacon, I, I don't do that. So, in my head, I'm like, yeah, sweet, uh, let's fight. Um, but yeah, um, you know, fight, say yes to, a very, um, a very silly at times, because anyone knows, a fighter don't ever say no. So, if the people think it's a silly fight, don't offer me it because you're just going to get a yes. You're not going to get a no. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, it's a very commendable quality that you have fighting anyone, anywhere, anytime. But how much does it mean to you to have this second chance with uh, BKB and Jim and Joe? Ah, uh, listen, Jim and Joe have been 
the Jim and Joe have been amazing to me, to be fair. Listen, they could have fucked me off after the Macintosh, after the first handy fight, or even after the second handy fight. Mm. They gave me another chance with Lawson, but they, they, they knew deep down Lawson was too big. And I knew deep down Lawson was too big, but he didn't have a win. So I didn't have a win, so I thought, it's a risk. We all take risks, and I tend to take them a little bit further than most. But I'm not going to say no. So, listen, Jim and Joe have been fantastic, and I couldn't thank them enough, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm trying to boost them, even though they boost their self even, like, more anyway. But, I mean, every time we make press, I always give them a massive mention because they they do a lot of hard work, and especially give me another chance and hopefully give me the, the fight I want rather than them offering me a fight, let me offer them a fight and say, listen, this makes money, it makes press, and it's people talking again. It's the first fight. Um, drew one. I, I lost one. And uh, let's have it again. You know what I mean? And uh, then we proved that it was a bad time for me, and, you know, the poison dwarf will be going to sleep within two rounds. And it was that for me. Uh, the, it's, not t- it's not talking that's a promise hmm. or so much to uh, you know I've got a year and a half left in my contract a year just just over a year of my, my contract I need to make an impression because I don't want to be known as a joke in boxing and a joke in being knuckle hmm. I'm a fight and I was born to fight and find what I do so it's my time to prove myself and Mark Hanley needs to come back from his loss after 10 seconds with the legend Brad Pickett. Mm. Fight, fight me and I'll give you 20 seconds and I'll put you to see. No, it makes a lot of sense. A big redemption fight and uh, yeah, definitely one I'd like to see. But let's talk about your good friend Tyler Goodjohn. Obviously, he's partaking in arguably the biggest fight of his entire career, boxing and bare knuckle, uh, against the great Jimmy Sweeney. What's your prediction for that fight? I love Jimmy Sweeney. Jimmy Sweeney's always like, He's always given me the, the, you know, he, he respects fighters. And I think he respects me a little bit more because I've overcome adversity and overcome things. That is the right word, the adversity. Yeah. yeah, I've overcome all that. And uh, I think he respects the fact that I haven't said no to anything. So I respect Jimmy Sweeney. I love Jimmy Sweeney. And Oli Morris, lovely people. Mm-hmm. Um, I just believe uh, Tyler Goodjohn is uh, is standing. Shut the gate, mate. Yeah. Then, uh, um, yeah, I just believe Tyler Goodjohn will be too strong, and we well, yeah, Jim, Jimmy Jimmy Sweeney will be throwing all these shots at him, and I, I think Tyler is just like his sack all up and just be like, yeah take it to him and it will break Jimmy's heart by by Tyler taking it all and um, just coming back at him. But will that fight happen? Is that fight happening? You know? That's a great question. We don't know. This, we never know, do we? No, I mean, we never know. So. And the title is a pornographic <laughs> lifestyle at the minute. Um, has, he got, has, has he got it in him to come back and do it, you know, that's what I'm saying. I love Tyler and I really hope he does the business. I think he will, but we will see. Mm. I think that's a, like you've just said there, that fight will come down a lot to mentality and it will come down to how much Tyler wants it and that's what is so exciting about that fight. So obviously you've got a lot of people to thank for your journey so far. Who have we got to thank? Um, Paul Brown at uh, We Sell Ball. Mm I um, mean, helped me a lot and always buys tickets off me and you know, always supports me, really. So, uh, thanks to Paul. Uh, we've got Fancy Kitchens. Um, it's a good place for kitchens, obviously. <laughs> um, he's a, very well known, very well known in, um, in uh, Fancy in around the area. Chris Larkin, his name. Mm-hmm. And we've got Top to Bottom driveways and patios and that's my good friend Fletcher and you know he, he he's helped me out come to uh come to my fights you know from uh from my area come to my fights and 
You know, he shows his support on social media. You know, and that's all. That's all. That's that's everyone on social media really as well because you see all the likes and the shares that I get. That gives me the opportunity to get the stuff that I get, the sponsorships, the hair transplants. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like it helps me in in everything. You know, people think one like doesn't mean nothing. Mm. Well, to people that are infamous like me and they're out there in the press, it means a lot because every like, every attention gets out of there. You know. To be fair, the social media is probably the biggest platform. It's bigger than the national media, if I'm honest. Mm. Um, to get out of it, it's worldwide, isn't it? You know, social media is worldwide, and that's how Jim and Joe are a great job with BKB. Definitely, definitely. Well, very well said, Robin, and uh, thank you for your time, my friend. Fuck you. <laughs> See you later, guys. <laughs> Where are you?